and he was delighted with that. Man of the match, well, there was one for Sri Lanka, and that was Judith Mendes, and the man of the match for England was Kim Barnett. Well, welcome to Old Trafford for the first of three matches, 55 overs aside, for the Texaco Trophy. There's a little prize to win each individual match, a matter of £4,250. Now, the last time these two sides met was in the final of the World Cup in Calcutta. And then, of course, Australia were the winners. They're proven champions in one-day cricket. Let's take a look at the teams then. On this occasion, we see England with uh, some well-known names there, but a new arrangement with David Gower back as captain and David Gower indeed opening the batting. Ian Botham, too, is back after a long layoff for injury. And Australia, well-known names with the bowling, Alderman, Rackerman and Lawson, the fast bowlers, Steve Waugh, an excellent medium pacer. And it's the fifth bowler that really raises the eyebrow, Tom Moody, the little medium pacer, or perhaps Alan Border will come into it as well. Well, the toss was won by David Gower, and England decided to bat first. We'll join now in the third over. It's the first ball. Alderman to Gower, the score. Three for no wicket. There's a handsome shot from David Gower. And that'll be four. So nothing better than that for an England captain to start his new reign. What a beautiful stroke this is. Long half volley, that lovely straight swing of the bat. Beautifully timed, he didn't really hit it, just pushed very firmly at it and went between mid-off and the bowler. Orthodox field for Jeff Lawson. That's a trademark good shot. Getting on the front foot first and then rocking back and taking three runs. Very well timed by Graham Gooch. You see there's no real pace in the wicket, that was halfway down. And uh, Gooch having all the time in the world to get in position. See he's gone forward, he's got time to go back and just turn the wrists as he pushes that square on the onside. Well, that's well bowled. That's the area that David Gow has been vulnerable in the past. Yes, useful delivery. Just slanted across. Dave definitely played at that. Although he dropped his hands as the ball just went by. But he definitely played at that one. season. Latched into that one. Terry Oldman just drifting down the onside there. And Graham Gooch, you see, playing round that foot again, but picking that up beautifully. There's a handsome shot. Second boundary of the morning for Gower. Just as good looking a shot as the first one. little more temper in this David Gow really letting fly at that one as it drifts across him Lawson's bowled very well at Gower actually and uh, it's a suitable reply by the England captain of the pitch. Remarkable shot this. David Gow going on the front foot and then having all the time in the world just to pick that up. So we're here, straight through the gully area, 
safe enough and four. A little bit of good fortune for David Gower here. Flat batting that off the front foot, getting a thick outside edge. Beautifully bowled. That's what he was doing the other day at Lords. And I watched him when he bowled from the nursery end. He's moving it away in the air, a little bit back off the seam as well. And that has uh, left David Gower quite beautifully. Good, just taken straight. That's beautifully timed. That's not even a half volley. He hit that on top of the bounce, and uh, it really is the sign of a batsman in prime form. Almost a gentle stroke from David Gower. No tremendous power there. Quite useful timing, though. Almost a gentle delivery as well, Richie. I don't think it's quite the pitch the ball bounces on. See, this is halfway down, and David Gow having all the time in the world to paddle that round high over mid-wicket for four. So far, even better than that cover drive of Gooch's. Another lovely shot. S slanting away from David Gow, but he's across there. And what a pleasure it is to uh, see a game of cricket being played on a, a decent pitch. Wilson now gives way to Rackerman, coming in from the Warwick Road end. That's very well bowled. Very well bowled. That's slant across the left-hander. Umpire John Holder has uh, given the first wicket to the Australians. Rackerman has had Gower caught by Healy. Good bowling change and well bowled by Rackerman. Yes, almost a repeat of the previous delivery, and uh, this time David Gower just getting a thin edge through to the keeper. But uh, I don't think partnership's been successful. 55 on the board and 11 overs gone, so England will be well satisfied with the experiment of sending David Gower in first. Rackerman to Gooch. We're in the 16th over. Oh, that's a lovely shot. Perfect angle through that gap there between the wicket and mid on. Wonderful timing. That's the shot we were talking about with Graham Gooch. She likes to get that left foot down round about off the middle. And as the ball is angled in, he plays across the line and isn't that wide of mid-on. But on that occasion, he played it beautifully. Steve Waugh is the new bowler. Good competitive cricketer. Oh, it's out! Well, Gatting doesn't think it's out. Yes, Nigel Plews, the umpire, knows it's out. It was caught by Boone at shortish extra cover. That really reinforces the Alan Border's theory about Mike Gatting, that he pushes into the ball, pushes into the bounce. Take another look at this. 
Well, it just looked as if it was off the pad and nothing near the bat. Reeling was. Well, it's a tremendous amount of carry that to just go off the pad. I mean, that really almost cleared cover point. I think that shows that the type of pads they're using now. You can see those are new type of pads, and uh, quite some of them I've seen really bounce away over short legs and everything. And on that occasion, that almost cleared cover. Whether it actually got an inside edge off the pad, it was certainly pad first. It could well have caught the edge of the bat of the glove or something like that. Very, very difficult to tell from there because you, you really can't see the angle the ball's going. But certainly pad first and then going almost over the top of cover point. It just makes the point that uh, the Australian see Mike Gadding playing into the bounce and there's always the danger of that back pad or pad bat and see how far it went. That's David Boone at short extra. Were bowled. Good over. Six overs, one maiden. That was a maiden from Stephen War. One for 15. It's 96 for two. Inning will have zeroed in on Tom Moody. But I reckon uh, if he played as a full bowler, that's where the weakness might be. Single there, he's a good fielder, Mike Valletta. A rule from that. Beautiful kickback. Yeah, it's broken the shackles a little. It's just what England need. Yes, and this uh, brings the hundred up. And that's where Graham Gooch really is very, very strong indeed. Left arm spin from Alan Border. And he's done it again. He's got some good batsmen over the years. And now he's got Gooch with that dinky little sweep that flew from the top edge around the corner to Dean Jones. And that is a brilliant piece of work from Alan Border. Yes, well, Graham Gooch trying to paddle this round the corner very gently. It just straightened a bit, in fact. Got a top edge and it lobbed very gently to Dean Jones behind square there. So Alan Border strikes and uh, Australia will be absolutely delighted with that. You can bet your sweet life they will. Robin Smith. That's four runs. Moody straying down the leg side. And Robin Smith getting the leg well across there and the ball just going down the leg side and a thick inside edge. Tom Moody bowling to Alan Lamb. And that's England's 150. It's come up in the 38th over. hit that with power for it. Well, that wasn't a bad over really by the bowler but uh, they've taken singles of every ball and then the four as well so that just shows the advantage of taking those quick singles but a beautiful stroke there by Robin Smith it's a great shot from Smith short yeah 
and Alan Burden not really getting the right line since lunch. He's been hurting down that leg side quite a lot, and Robin Smith and Alan are both pretty good sweepers. And again, there you saw Robin Smith really whipping that away to square leg. Jeff Lawson recalled into the attack now with runs coming too quickly for Borders' peace of mind. Five over so far for 32. there chopping the ball down onto his stumps and the recall of Jeff Lawson pays off Lamb bowled by Lawson for 35 and England now 161 for four in the 40th over well Lamb there trying to make a bit of room for himself the ball came back actually I think it went off the top of his leg onto the off stump but certainly the ball came back quite a lot of the seam there. A useful innings there by Alan Lamb. He run well between the wickets, particularly with Robin Smith. Kept the scoreboard ticking over nicely. New batsman Ian Botham. Perfect situation. Ball nipping back onto Lamb and coming off the thigh, possibly off a little bit of bat. Down onto the stumps. That's out. Both and caught by Boone in the gully, going for the square drive. And Jeff Lawson strikes again. England 167 for five in the 42nd over. Both them out for four. A little bit unlucky there. It's on the up. It's quite a good shot, really. It just went about a foot or eight inches in the air and dead straight at Boone, but it was going like a bomb. Good catch. A little bit unlucky there for him, Botham. Shot you've got to really try and play at this stage of the game. Probably it was just leaning back that little bit, not leaning into the ball, and that just allowed it to go off the floor. Disappointment there for Ian Botham on his return. But good bowling by Jeff Walsh. He's bowled pretty quick this last few overs. <laughs> chance but it just whistled to the boundary and Robbie Smith really middling that and he's on the up not a half volley and you can see not too far from Terry Alderman but really no chance at all of catching that It's all over for Smith, it's an easy caught and bowled and it's the first time really that Robin Smith has misjudged the pace of this wicket, it's a little on the slow side and straight out of the middle of the bat into the middle of the hands, caught and bowled, Alderman for 35. Yes and Smith looking in marvellous form, caught and bowled Alderman for 35 and he really played very well indeed. And a great blow for England there. On the front foot, looking to hit that, stopping his shot as the ball checks a bit and lobbing it straight back to Terry Alderman.
good shot. The letter, deep cover. Lovely ball, just a little bit slower. And Stephen Rhodes, in any case, had decided to take a few steps towards it, get out to meet it. He met it, and it bypassed him. So Rhodes is bowled by Lawson for eight. And England's seventh wicket falls for 190. Yes, and Stephen Rhodes coming down the wicket and perfectly straight to live just a little bit of movement away from him and uh, clips the middle and off perhaps a little bit early to do the charging at our commentary end Rackerman goes off and Steve Waugh comes on Rackerman's off after eight overs Good shout, he's given out, Pringle's gone. Steve Waugh, the man with a good line, the good length there. And Pringle playing across. And so England's eighth wicket goes down now, and the score 203. Yes, a pretty straight delivery. And Pringle only going half forward, that hitting him right in front of the middle stump. Well, he tried very hard, Derek Pringle, to push the pace along. But with the outfield well set, he seemed to be getting only singles. A slower delivery <laughs> and uh, John Embry completely surrounded there went high in the air and he dropped it between three It's a fair shot, we're in the 54th over, and John Embry gives himself, let's say kindly, a little bit of room. 2.20 as the ninth wicket falls. The ideal delivery, straight. John Embry having given himself so much room that he could uh, hardly reach it in the end. That's high. Dean Jones drops it. By no means an easy chance. He really was running at full tilt there. Yes, and Neil Foster having a swing in this last over. See how far Jones has got to go and see how flat out he is. Very, very difficult indeed. And uh, the batsman ran three. Last ball of the England innings. Steve Waugh to De Freitas. That's gone high. There's a man under it this time. It's, a, it's Terry Alderman who goes for it. Down it goes. Oh, and they steal another one. In the confusion and chaos, England still three. Terry Alderman, I think, sees the humour of that. He was running backwards, Jeff Lawson running inwards. Probably it was Lawson's. Listen to Tom Graveney. Yes, I think at this stage of the proceedings, the man running in has got to be the favourite to go for the catch. It's almost uh, between them, in fact, because the man running in has stopped. 
he should have been the man to go for it, really. It was the partnership between Graham Gooch and David Gower of 55 for the first wicket that really set England going at a proper tempo. Supporting roles in the middle by Lamb and Smith, but down the bottom of the order, runs always looked hard to come by, especially boundaries in short supply indeed. 2.31 for nine then was the England score, and the bowling had been tight, and the fielding excellent, very good fielding by Australia. The most economical bowling, Terry Alderman and Carl Rackerman, the two hardest bowlers to get away. And Lawson, of course, had a, a very, very effective second spell, bringing him three wickets. So it was a, a run rate required of 4.22 per over for Australia as they set off chasing 2.32 to win. Now, was it a good score? Very difficult to gauge whether it was an easy one to get or difficult. There had been a struggle for England as the ball got older and softer. Would it then again happen to Australia? Well, we'll see as we join the Australian innings at the first ball or the fourth over, and the score is eight without loss. De Freitas to David Boone. And bowled in. First strike. And Boone, stump removed. Bowled by De Freitas. For five and the score, Australia eight for one. Well, this is a wicket that England really wanted. David Boone's been in marvellous form. Didn't do a great deal, it just ran into him a little bit and just found that gap between bat and pad. But I suppose by law of averages, Boone was due to fail. He's been making a lot of runs on this tour. And just hitting through a ball that wasn't quite of a full enough length. But a very vital wicket there for England. New batsman Dean Jones. Defreitas to Jones. And a handsome shot from Jones. That's four runs. to Jeff Marsh. Being too much. And a good shout again by Neil Foster, the ball again. Just going back in, off the seam, angling in, but I think quite rightly there, John Older judging that that would just miss the leg stump. for England, first one for Foster, and Jones caught at the wicket by Rhodes for four, and Australia now 13 for two. A little bit unlucky here, Dean Jones, the ball going down the leg side, not a great delivery, but uh, I'm trying to turn it, just brushed the bat, and Stephen Rhodes there making ground, made a lot of ground that took the catch easily. So, a great start here for England. Foster to border. That's close. Oh, my goodness me, border looking to get off the mark. And, well, quick reactions from Foster. Yes, Neil Foster very quick on the follow-through here, getting in between the batsmen, making it very difficult for the batsman at the running end, and sure if it hit here, then I think that possibly Alan Border would have been out there. So very, very good feeling by Neil Foster there. Oh, and that's four runs, but straight over the top. Border trying to ride his luck. Well, they're giving it the full treatment here, Alan Boda. An angled bat and a full flash, so it'd have been a little bit unlucky to get caught at slip, and so it proved to be. The ball clearing slip comfortably and whistling down to that third man boundary. If you're going to flash, flash hard. Foster to border. Nip 
slipping back and gating border. 17 for three for the Australian captain on his way back, bowled by Foster. A good delivery here by Foster, a little bit full of length, which we've been talking about. And that ball coming back nicely off the seam, pitching off and hitting off to the left-handed batsman. And Alan Boda left absolute defenceless there. And not get many of those in the season, but he's got one today, and that's put England in a tremendous position now. 17th for three, they're already behind the clock and lost three wickets. New batsman Steve Waugh. Crisis time for Australia. They're changing the bowling. Derek Prindle coming on to replace Philip Refratis. Strong on their legs, just easing the ball away off the pads. And then Foster to Jeff Marsh. Nice timing. It was nice timing, it kept on running away from him. There's a lovely stroke off the back foot, he doesn't really hit it. Just pushes firmly and just runs away from John Henry. Pick up a couple there, getting us the fielder. Not even get three wars very quick. <laughs> 50 up for Australia in this last over before T. One of the few bowlers to have topped 100 wickets in one day internationals. And that's a big hit, that's four. Wolves decided that the time has come. I think Stephen Waugh has been looking to play that shot as soon as Ian Botham just pitches up a little bit. He's had a couple of cracks at it, but that was the first time it was just in the right spot for the hit over the top. And a nice shot there, a lovely follow through. There's Rhodes claiming it, and he's given it. What a fine catch by Steve Rhodes. That's the sort of attacking wicket-keeping that's earned him his selection. Attacks the ball always and asks questions afterwards, and, well, what a great, great boost that is. Marsh going after a long, long innings, caught by Rhodes off the bowling of John Embury. 17, 64 for four, Australia. You have to remember just getting the ball to just spin a little. Just enough to keep him interested. You can just see there probably a little bit of a glove onto the thigh pad. And Rhodes doing very well indeed there. Very athletic catch. He'd be blinded by the batsman's body for most of the time as the ball got to there. But then he recovered very quickly. You see, completely off the floor there as he made that catch. That'll give him a bit of encouragement. And really, Australia would have to be thinking to try and get after John Embury, but uh, John's a very good bowler in these certain circumstances and not the easiest to get after. Taking him on, it'll be close with an arm like that. Safe. Defratus is... Hardly the man to risk a second to, but Moody knew what he was at. Yes, Defraitis had to come in a long way, almost to the uh, circle, and 
really. Uh, I think there's always probably two on there, particularly in one-day cricket when you're willing to take a bit of a chance. And both them being rested now, with only two overs left of his spell, and Philip De Freitas to come back. That might be out. And it is. There we are. It's the end of Steve Waugh. And that pays off for England, bringing back Philip De Freitas. Waugh forced to try and hit the ball in the air. And a sad Steve Waugh walking off. Out for 35. I don't think there was ever going to be much doubt about this catch, Ray. Oh, there you are, see, it's just short of a length. He's trying to hit the ball straight, but because it doesn't come onto the bat, then it goes square. And we've got a man there just in front of square, mid-wicket, and that's the only place the ball can go. New batsman for Australia, Mike Valletta. Cause isn't lost yet, but a fairly desperate situation now with half the side having gone. The end of this over, just 21 more. That'll be four. No slip. So, uh, the bowler can't be too aggrieved about the batsman picking up four runs there. It's slightly angled bat. I think he was running down to third man. It just moved a bit. But the 100 up. He's an interesting cricketer, Mike Valletta. I don't think there's anyone keener in the world about uh, playing the game. It's nicely played by Valletta. Moody's going to look for a third. It was good cricket by the fielder out there, both of them. a little bit of room for the stroke and uh, followed him didn't give him the chance to hit it away on the offside Moody in the end had to play it defensively and Australia now six down for 115 24 to Moody yes well bowled by John Embry there and Tom Moody playing very well actually but Embry bowling the straight one Moody trying to run that past the off stump. And it goes underneath his bat and hits the leg stump. Ian Healy about to take strike now to Derek Pringle. see Mike Bellato playing all the way around that one and uh, not unlike Pringle's own LBW seventy in to Valletta and a straight to 190 in for seven needing 232 to win Jeff Lawson is the new batsman. <laughs> the 
Freitas. Caught it. Lawson goes. It's 120 for eight now. It was well judged in the end by De Freitas. Might well have lost it early on. Embury claims a wicket. Lawson goes. <laughs> Did pretty well to pick that up, actually. And De Freitas just getting it right there. And in fact, he only caught it in one hand. <laughs> Missed it all together with his left hand, but it went straight into his right. And you can see that again. Just in the right hand. Last two men are Carl Rackerman and uh, Terry Alderman. This is Rackerman coming out now. Foster has looked as though uh, he's got his rhythm right in the overs he's bowled out there today. His run in is nice and smooth and his delivery stride is good. That's one down for Steve Rhodes. Very difficult. It looked as though he may just have taken a pace to the left towards the onside and then the ball cut back. takes the catch behind point. Foster has another wicket. The Australians are nine down for 136. Again, trying to hit the ball on the up. It wasn't a half volley. And it just isn't going on quick enough on this weekend. A very comfortable catch there for John Embry just behind square on the offside. Both into ball. And that's it. Nothing more conclusive than uh, having your off stump peg back to finish the game. Both of them take a wicket, so they've uh, shared them around, the England bowlers, and a good win. Good win for England. Yes, and that probably just went off the front pad, just running into the batsman, brushing the front pad, and back onto the off stump. And a good all-round performance. All England bowlers have bowled pretty well out there, steadily, and just proved how hard it is to make runs on this wicket quickly. You can make runs if you're at time, but to score them at a quick pace of five and over is very difficult. It was the damage done to the early order that really won England this match. A bit of luck in the dismissal of Jones and Marsh, caught on the leg side, but then some fine bowling from De Freitas and by Foster. Brave effort to rescue it by Steve Waugh and Tom Moody, but it was England all the way, and Australia were all out for 136. 47.1 overs were bowled, and, well, look at those bowling figures. Foster, 3 for 29, De Freitas, 2 for 19. Good to see Ian Botham back. Economical bowling, 1 for 28, as Derek Pringle, 1 for 19. And three wickets for John Embry, all good news for the England side. And so the official result in the first... Texaco Trophy match, England beat Australia by 95 runs. And Clive Lloyd made his man of the match, Philip De Freitas. No change in the...